Please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. All right, up next we want to power up the amplifier, but before we do that, there's a couple of precautions we probably want to take here in making sure that we power this thing up properly. And I've got a combination of devices here on the bench I want to talk to you about a little bit. First and foremost, this is a Variac, okay? And it's probably the number one device you're going to use in bringing up old vintage gear. And what this does, regardless of the brand, make, model, or whatnot, this thing will start out down here around zero volts, and as you crank it up, it will bring the unit up to, and I've got a little black mark right here for 110, 112 volts or so. Um, one thing to be aware of with a Variac, though, you can actually go higher than the wall voltage, and you may go, hmm, how do you actually get higher than you're getting out of the wall voltage into your piece of gear? Well, this unit acts like an auto transformer, and what it can do is actually just like any other transformer, it can take the, the voltage on the secondary higher than on the primary. Um, so be careful when you're bringing a unit up, and we'll talk more about how to bring a unit up here in a minute. Another piece of very common gear you see when people working on tube, tube equipment or even solid state equipment is a isolation transformer. Now this one's pretty interesting in that it'll let you go um, low, nominal, or high. In other words, if you plugged in right here you would get your normal 110 volts out. High might take you to 120 volts and low may take you down to uh, uh, 100 volts or so. And it'll tell you here on the side what it actually does. And then this little setting here is to set what you want the uh, the uh, input voltage to be. So I've got it set on 120 for today's time. This one's made by RCA and you can pick these up usually about 30 or 40 bucks. You plug one in, into the wall and then the other end into your equipment. But what it does is it completely isolates um, the power that you're feeding into your amplifier from the grounding of the electrical grid of your house. And for some older tube gear that may have floating chassis and or hot chassis, um, it's a good idea to have one of these. If you don't, it's okay, um, but if you're going to get into working on a lot of gear, you might want one of these. I actually have one of these mounted or sitting underneath my bench that's constantly in between the wall and uh, my Variac unit. So that's an optional piece, but definitely a Variac you're going to need. This is another unit. This is a dim bulb te um, tester, and what you do is you plug in the radio you want to test into one end plug the other end into your wall and then what would go right here and it'll tell you is a lamp uh, they, they make a little socket and you put a light bulb into it and uh, it'll tell you for 50 watts use a half amp for one one watt use a hundred watt bulb so on and so forth and what it does is it puts this light bulb in series with the one of the legs of your power so if for whatever reason there happens to be a short in your radio here what it'll do is the light bulb will actually light up and start drawing current um, instead of taking all the current to your device. And um, it's a good safety measure if you happen to, um, if you're going to be doing a lot of work on, bench, on gear, you might want to get a uh, dim bulb tester set up. Uh, it could save your life because that light bulb lighting up, um, you know, could be uh, taking the current that maybe is going across your body if you got into the got into a tube unit and touched something you shouldn't have, light bulb would light up instead of your heart lighting up, um, is what these are for. Um, but there again, it, it's optional, I just highly recommend it. Um, and then the last one that I think is somewhat not optional, <laughs> but it could be, um, is a little, I use a little device here called Kilowatt. These things are about $15, $17. And all it does is you plug one end into the outlet here that you're going to be measuring. You plug your device into this, and then it gives you a readout of the voltage. So as you're turning this up, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you would actually read here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It would tick up. You can also hit another button here, amp, and you could read the current um, as this is ticking up. Let me pause for a minute and show you these online. All right, here we are on Amazon. You can see the one I'm using here. It's $17.29 shipped. Um, I, I will say there's some newer ones out here I'm seeing, though, that at the same time it shows voltage, 
could also show, show current and several other things. So if I was having to make a choice today, I might would pick this one here for $24 that shows the voltage and the current and uh, whatnot all at the same time. So there's also some little modules you can buy here that you kind of clip around and uh, feed your power through. Um, they could do some of the same thing. Um, a lot of different ways to kind of skin this proverbial cat, but um, uh, like I say, I've just had this since they first came out probably seven or eight to ten years ago, and I'm still using them today. Okay, sorry for going a little bit shaky cam here, but I wanted to show you this. This is the Variac I use on my bench, and it's it's not all that complicated. It's really just a Variac built in over here on the left, and I can turn it left and right. I can decide whether to limit the current or not. In other words, uh, just street feed straight off the Variac or go through a dim bulb setup over here, okay? Got a power switch, then I've just got a voltmeter that goes from 0 to 150 volts here. So as I turn the unit on, you can see here as I adjust it, um, I can tell what voltage I'm at. And then I can also read the current off, uh, goes from here from uh, 0 to 5 amps. So I can tell if something is shorted because instead of it going up to maybe 100 milliamps, 200, um, or maybe one amp or so, it'll start pegging way over here, and all of a sudden I know it's shorted. But what the other thing that's really cool about this setup, and you can see it down inside here, there's actually two light bulbs built inside of this unit, and I can swap in or out bulb number one or bulb number two by using these jumpers, um, and it lets me determine how much of a current uh, kind of limit I can do there by using the two bulbs in series or just one of those. But um, that's, this is how what I use to bring things up on the bench all the time, and that's what we're going to use today to bring this thing up. What I've got plugged into the back of this, believe it or not, um, over here is nothing more than a power strip, and this, this cord just feeds all the way from here around into the back of the Variac. And then feeding into this power strip, I have my little um, kilowatt here, and this is where I plug my piece of equipment here on the bench I'm going to be testing into. Um, and so I can actually read the voltage. And as I turn that over there, you can see right now maybe it says 63.5 volts is what we're at right now. So that's how I leave my setup all the time. If you don't have that and you just have a standalone unit, you could always plug the kilowatt straight into it or plug a power strip into it and then the kilowatt into the power strip and then come out of that into the piece of gear equipment you're doing and use this to kind of turn it up. Some some of these units are really nice and have built-in um, um, current and uh, voltage meters built into the Variac and you don't need all the extra stuff I'm talking about. Alright, this is going to be a little bit hard to see to get both of these in the video, but what I'm going to do is keep an eye on this unit here. As I bring it up, I'm looking for any signs of smoke or flashes of light, anything that might indicate um, there's a problem inside the amplifier. And the same time up here I'm going to reach up, and usually what I'll start doing is I'll bring a unit up to about 25, 30 volts, and I'll let it sit there. Uh, because often, often at that voltage, with a piece of tube gear, you don't have enough voltage yet to light the filaments of the tubes which means the tubes aren't conducting, which means the rectifier here um, is not conducting and actually uh, providing DC to the circuits at that low voltage. So um, typically it's up around 50 to 60 volts when you'll start getting enough voltage inside of your unit here um, to actually um, kind of light things up and get things going. Um, at this point, I'm up at 57.3 volts. Um, let see if I can see any filaments glowing. I'm starting to look for filaments glowing in the tubes here. All right. At this point, we're up to, uh, looks like, 71 volts at this point. And I am seeing filaments glowing um, on the tubes here on the inside. And I'm just kind of bringing it up slowly like this. I don't wait too long. Um, it's not a it's not an hour long process. It's usually a five minute or so process. Um, and I can see this filament's glowing quite brightly. And I do not see a filament glowing on this tube over here yet. So um, interesting. All right. At this point, I'm up to 90 volts, 
And now I see the filament glowing on this tube. Um, filaments on this. And it looks like the rectifier is starting to light up at this point. Um, so I'm going to keep bringing it on up. We're at 106 volts at this point. Um, things are starting to glow fairly well. Still no smoke, still no flashing. We're up to 112 volts right there. And usually I stop around 117 volts or so. Um, 120, that's 115. There we go. We're at 117 volts right there. And I don't see smoke coming out of this unit, but I'm worried. And the reason I'm worried is the fact that um, we had a blown fuse. So what caused the fuse to blow in this unit? Um, so oftentimes if I make it this far, and one thing I do, I, I make sure I never have an input fed into an amplifier unless I have a load on it for an output, okay? Because um, if you're feeding an input with no output load, you have a possibility of uh, causing some damage. But with no input and no output, we're watching it at this point. And what I would probably do at this point, now that we're up to 120 volts here, is I would let this sit for a little while. Um, knowing that it blew a fuse before, it could be something that when it heats up, or maybe one of these capacitors, um, as they get kind of warm, uh, maybe it has a high ESR equivalent series resistance, and over time the uh, capacitor gets warm inside and maybe starts failing and thus causing the short that might have taken the, uh, the fuse out. So I would leave it sitting like this, but at this point, things seem to be functioning okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now put a load onto it. Okay, at this point you can see I've got a load here, and this is just feeding up into my dummy load uh, switch box up above, um, where I can either go speaker or dummy load. Um, you guys have probably seen that many times, but I'll just be able to flip the, flip the channel here from uh, dummy load to speaker, and then I've got outputs tied off of that I can feed into lots of different pieces of test equipment. You can also see the other cord that I have feeding out of it here um, just feeds up and I'm feeding it into a BNK um, signal generator up here and I'm going to put the amplitude down pretty low and I'm going to turn it on. Oh boy, we've got this. Um, let's go way down there and let's put it on a one kilohertz signal. Need to clean the potentiometer on this thing, it appears. <laughs> All right, we're at a uh, 1.02 kilohertz signal. And I'm just going to feed it up and turn it up a little bit and see if we're getting any signal out of this unit. And at this point, I'm not hearing anything, so, um, hmm. Well, guess what? We've brought it up on a Variac and it's still not working. Um, so, that's a good point to call this a wrap. <laughs> and um, our video on how to bring a unit up on a Variac is complete at this point. And now I'm going to uh, jump into another troubleshooting video on how to figure out why this amplifier is just not working at this point. So, thanks for watching everybody. hope you learned how to bring something up on a Variac slowly. If at any point you would have seen smoke, um, you would have seen sparks, um, these filaments wouldn't have lit up, you would have backed back off and uh, done some more uh, troubleshooting on the inside to figure out what's going on. But um, fortunately we were able to get it up to full operating voltage without it cutting out, but unfortunately still not working. So we got to continue this journey here. Thanks for watching everybody.